Hi guys, we didn't see each other for a long time, <laughs> but the summertime is over and I'm back to the airfield. And today we have three interesting subjects to talk about, besides the mosquitoes, of course, which are killing me. <laughs> uh, first subject is the Black Horse Viper has a new motor for 8S and we are going to fly on the Black Horse Viper today on 8S, three batteries, uh, 150 amps at takeoff, so it's kind of strong, it's almost four kilowatts. And it sounds nice because the, this is a Vemotech and uh, it's really well balanced, so, so it sounds amazing. So I'm very pleased, I already had two flights on it with this setup, it's nice. But very, very interesting thing is the Odyssey and the new drives for Odyssey that just arrived. And these are the Jetfan 110 from Austria and Jetfan 130 from Austria. And the next video is going to be two flights. One flight is going to be the Jetfan 110 on 7 kilowatts, so it's more or less 9 kilos of thrust, more or less. And this is the maximum that, that this drive is capable of delivering, not the drive itself, but the motor, because there are no stronger motors on the market. So it's going to be fun. But the second flight is going to be super interesting because this is the new Jetfan 130, which will be flying on 16S 205 amps at takeoff. So I estimate about 10 or 11 kilowatts, which will give around 14 or 15 kilograms of thrust, which is going to be exactly the weight of Odyssey or maybe slightly more. So. You know, my calculations uh, on the eCalc told me that uh, we might actually close, come close to a 300 kilometer barrier with the big one. And I'm very, very excited because I suspect that, uh, that the small one 110 will be not enough for this big jet. And this one will be the drive to stay. So, interesting. This is a bigger motor, 56 millimeters motor. The total weight is probably like one and a half kilograms. Of course, it's carbon as well as this one, but the efficiency of those drives I, I expect to be amazing and the sound also amazing. So uh, stay tuned for the next video, which is going to be very interesting. But now let's fly with the, with the Black Horse Viper on the 8S 3.5 kilowatts and let's see how it flies. This motor that I've put in is 370 grams, so it's capable of holding this power. I think I 
touch the bushes. <laughs> This is already half battery power, so it's nice. Okay, let's dive. Super low pass. Okay, let's check the top speed. 211 kilometers per hour. Not bad. Viper jet turns on a dime. It's unbelievable. Some motor cooling. Okay. So it was an interesting flight. Uh, yeah, let's check the, the flight data. We had six minutes, uh, 15 seconds flight, almost full throttle all the time. So it's very nice with this big jet. Uh, a take of 151 amps, 4,100 uh, watts, so four kilowatts on 8S. Then of course it quickly dropped to 126 amps, 3.3 kilowatts, but it's still enough. For sure it's enough because it flew marvelous. Uh, Mid-flight we, we made a little diving and we clocked 211 kilometers per hour, which is super nice. I'm very pleased, very, very pleased. And uh, yeah, I had to cool it down a little bit because we were pushing hard and it's kind of hot today. Uh, yeah, we used 9,000 out of 12,000 because we have three parallel, three battery, batteries in parallel, parallel 4,000. So it's 12,000, I use 9,000 of it. Cool. Yeah. 
And this jet is flying really like a foam. I really, if you look for a jet that is easy and kind of inexpensive and big, this is a jet for you because it doesn't stall. Like you could see I could really turn hard. I could turn on a dime, it was super nice. And maybe you noticed mid-flight, a low pass away from the camera. We caught the bushes with the, with the left wing, but the plane went on, you know, it didn't, didn't do anything. We just, I just heard it, we, we caught the bush. I expected, I suspected that it's going to be close, but not that close, <laughs> but we didn't crash. So it's fun, it's good. Yeah, and I have to say a few things because, you know, even though I was away, for the summertime, I was still following your, your YouTube channels and I was uh, following your projects. And I saw few of you building new jets and you buy expensive drives and you buy expensive planes and, and you set it up together. And then I saw it a few times and then you put the batteries or some other obstacles just in front of the EDF. It's really kind of pointless to buy super expensive. This one is actually not expensive, but other expensive EDF and to place the batteries straight in front of it because you ruin the efficiency. The efficiency goes super down if you don't have the unrestricted airflow from the intake to the EDF. So you, you have to make sure that from the, the, the intake ducts or open ducts, you know, from the intake, you have a, a clear path for, for the wind, for the air, to enter the EDF, it's super important because otherwise, you know, you will, you will use amps, but you will not gain thrust or speed. So it will cost you a lot, of, a lot of power and a lot of battery weight, but you will not fly well. So it's very important that the, the airflow is unobstructed and also super important that you have a nice lip on the EDF drive. The EDF drive without a lip like this, it's uh, not really efficient. So you have to have a lip. And in general, the bigger lip, the better efficiency. This is with EDFs. Of course, with turbines, there might be something else, but we're talking EDFs. And from the back side, you have usually three wires when you have an in-runner motor or outrunner too. It's always good to place those wires in line. So like with a wind view, with the view of the, the airflow, it's actually one wire because it's one after the other. This creates less drag. And if you have a 3D printer, it's always nice to print a cone that is directing the airflow smoothly because this will, this you know, absence of the cone will create a turbulent flow and it will create a lot of drag. Of course, you will have a, a massive cooling of the, of the inside of the, of the rotor, you know, the, the motor but you don't need so much. So the cone should be smooth and then cut in the end, like let's say one and a half centimeters. So you have the suction there and the air is being pulled between the winding and the rotor. I actually, before, just before the summertime, I demagnetized one rotor because I didn't have the airflow in the motor and the, mod, the, the winding was okay, but the rotor demagnetized because of high temperature. So you have to have the airflow in the motor. Yeah, so. This is it, the flight was great. I'm really, really looking forward to test this 130 jet fan. It looks professional, it looks serious and uh, very well built and very well designed. Even though it's not that expensive, but, uh, but looks very nice. So I'm very pleased to have it and I'm, I'm looking forward to try it. And we will all see it together at the next flight with the Odyssey. Okay, thank you so much and see you next time.